hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, great. So, all right, so let's just get right down to it. Okay. You wrote a book called Dirty Electricity. Actually, oh, wow, yes, thank you so much. Second edition. I just got it. Yeah. And look at it, it all started with Edison way back in 1892 when he generated the first electricity and put it into the grid. And it, it gave the world light and heat and electric motors, but it also started killing us right then. And the reason I know that is because. Uh, Edison's archives. Okay, well, well, when Edison started generating electricity, he had terrible problems with uh, the generators, uh, brush arcing. Uh, you know, the electric brushes uh, are the parts of the motor that makes the contact to the, the commutator shaft that picks up the electricity. And uh, he and they call, call them brushes because they actually look like brushes. They were wires bound together at the top, like the, you know, like this. Let's see if I can show you him. They had wires bound up the top like a, a brush, and they were wearing out, and they were causing arcing and sparking on the commutator. And he tried to solve the problem by dumping metal merc metallic mercury onto his brushes, but uh, it, that didn't help. It made everybody in the place sick. He had, I think, had nine j jumbo generators. They were huge, room-sized things. And uh, so the very fact that he had arcing and sparking tells me he was making dirty electricity because that's a, pr a very simple and a consistent way to make dirty electricity, arcing or sparking, or spark gaps do it. And uh, so right from the, from the get-go uh, with his DC system, he was sending out dirty electricity. So I know that by his own writings. And... Uh, Electric motors in the same way. You you go up to a you light, light up a vacuum cleaner in the dark and you see this nice green glow from the the motor arc. And motors and generators are essentially identical structures. And one you you put a mechanical you turn a shaft and get electricity, and the other you put electricity in and it turns the shaft. But they're basically the same same damn thing. So the this all goes back to the very beginning and. Uh, you can actually see differences, big differences in mortality by the turn of the century. That's from 1892 to 1900. The Amish who came here in, uh, that's a Mennonite sect that lives without electricity, they came over in the mid-1700s. And uh, by 1900, their, their life expectancy was in the 70s. If you lived in New York City, which was electrified, your life expectancy was 43 years if you were a guy and, and 46 years if you're a woman. So Amish will live 20 years longer without electricity. So that, that's my, my best evidence that it was happening early. The other evidence uh, is that long before we had microwaves, uh, uh, from, from, as uh, electricity spread across the country, it's very interesting. People take electricity for granted. People take electricity for granted. It started in, uh, in New York City in, on Pearl Street at his generating station in 1892. And it didn't get finished. Electrification of this country wasn't complete until the last farms got it in uh, 1955. So you had half, over half a century where part of the population had electricity and part didn't. So I went back and looked at the, the mortality data from the U.S. by state. And the Census Bureau in 1930, 1940, 1950 collected data on, on whether the residence or the farm was electrified. I used that data and showed that uh, as electrification spread across the country, residential electrification is measured by the census, uh, census takers. Uh, it correlated perfectly with mortality from uh, not just the cancers, but most cancers, suicide, diabetes, and if you look, compare the electrified areas like the Northeast had it first. If you compare them to the South, which didn't get it till real late in the game, or some places in, in like Arizona and New Mexico, they're just black and white differences in mortality. Uh, and
and even within the state, the electrified parts of the state always had higher mortality from almost all causes than did the rural unelectrified areas. So that's really solid, good solid data. And this is long before microwaves didn't come in until uh, World War II with radar. You know, radar range, that's a microwave oven. That's, that's they used to call them radar ranges. Directbeats.com. There we go. Magic. Yeah. Well, you know. I look uh, like a girl on Skype. All right. Well, you know, the, the, you know I, when, I, when I first published my first paper on uh, mortality and electrical work, this is back in the 80s, you were a little kid. Uh, I got, you know, there's my peers, the people who do the kind of work I do, I've been doing around the world, just a handful of them who are doing this kind of work. And, I think five or six of them called me up that same day that the paper got published and said, oh, you got to be nuts, you know, hand the electricity is way too weak to, to, to cause mortality problems. I said, hey, look, I'm just reporting what I found. And what I did is I, I computed all the deaths in Washington State for many years, in 1950 to, I think, 1970 initially, uh, in men and then later in women. Now we have them all right in the deep. Uh, to occupation, I looked at the relationship between what they died of what kind of work they reported. And the people who reported working with electricity, like electricians and TV repairmen, people who worked at substations and linemen, and, uh, you know, there's about 10 occupations, welders. They had a systematic excess of, of certain kinds of cancer, leukemia especially. So I wrote it up and got it published in the Lingo Journal of Medicine. And, uh, so I just told these guys when they called me, uh, one woman, I said, okay, if I'm wrong, show it, show it, look at data. So another set of data to show that I'm wrong. And of course, within a couple of weeks, uh, they all looked at data sets and found exactly the same thing. So not only did they not show I was wrong, they said I was right. It's, it's, what it's about is, uh, it's, it's about solar. There, there are newspapers that I, I don't want to interrupt this, uh, uh, what they have been saying, but uh, I, sh I show that there should be great caution with the green energies because they're lethal. I've looked at dozens of residential solars and some of the big residential the, the, the pavement that does are with the solar cells out here. Bureau of Land Management, federal lands mostly, and federal subsidies. And the electricity they make is full of dirty electricity. I've measured it from many places. It's horrible. But I've measured the users to it. If you use that electricity, you get dirty electricity in your house with the 60 cycle stuff. Wait, could you could you tell the people how you measure this? Measure dirt electricity? Yeah. You measure, well, a couple ways. Uh, I get a meter, I can go run over and get it for you and show you what it looks like. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I can show you my whole duty bag here. Okay, let's see if you can see this. This is, uh, I carry this in, uh, when I, I go measuring stuff. It's a, a oscilloscope case. Yeah. Here's, my, here's my main tool for measuring dirty electricity. It's called a microsearch meter. It's marketed by Stetzer, Stetzer Electric, Blair, Wisconsin. This is a special one. It's, it's, uh, and it, can, it measures 10 times the length of body. The other one goes up to 2,000 units. What it measures is the rate of change of the high voltage transients. That's, that's what, what dirty electricity is. It's harmonics and transients. It's stuff in a 60 cycle, writing on a 60 cycle waveform that shouldn't be there. And that's why the utility is called dirty electricity. I did. And it's also called, uh, it's called, uh, they measure it in terms of power quality. You have poor power quality, you've got a lot of dirty electricity and harmonics in, in your electricity. So you just plug the sucker in, and it's got a plug on this side. So. And you read it instantly. It gives you a reading. And you'd like to get uh, 50 units or below. In fact, some governments have specified that 50 is uh, the action level. But you know, I go to the hospital, it's like 20,000 units of this stuff. I, uh, and, uh, I go to a house that's got solar. I plug this thing into an outlet, and I'll have them shut the inverter off and watch the changes. The other thing I do is. Uh,
got this gives me all these. It's a two channel oscilloscope. So it's got two, two, two channels up on top. And what I do is uh, I, I measure the 60 cycle waveform. And, uh, in fact, I can show you a nice little trick that I discovered recently. This, this little antenna extends. If I put that on the scope, This, this happens to be a tracing I got. Well, you see all the stuff up here. This, that shouldn't be there. And you can see this is a, it's got a kind of a sinus, a sine wave. That's a, a dirty 60 cycle waveform. It should be nice and skinny. But let's let's go to let's with this measure. Things picking up right now. There's a ton of dirty electricity right here. Look at this. Shit, shit. See all that garbage in the house moving in real time. That's one way of measuring. And this was me this measuring what's in here. And I can show you another thing that's really interesting. I found out when I, uh, if I changed the timing on this, and I got to 21 milliseconds. Let's see. Go to, go to run. Can't see what I'm doing there. Okay, let's go. Go to 20 milliseconds. I get this characteristic signal everywhere, everywhere I've been in the West, and in between Mexico and uh, I'll see if I can show it to you. I caught the mystery signal, it's on my waveform. Oh yeah, there it is. I'll, 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 I'll freeze it. Let's show it to you. Let's, 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 maybe I shut this off. Yeah. Okay, so, so see, what? See, you know, there shouldn't be anything on the screen right now. That's 60 kilohertz. I can tell how what the frequency is because it, it measures it for one thing, and I can take the distance between the peaks with, with the cursor measure and measure the time. And that tells what the frequency is. The only thing is 60 cycles. Is 60 kilohertz is the national clock, and it's exactly 60 seconds a second. So I discovered this thing everywhere. I just found it here at my desk. I see it up in the Cascade Crest Trail. I, uh, the other thing that's interesting about it is uh, it's strong in the ground. It's in the earth. I think the military's got some sort of a communications project because why would it be on top of mountains out in the desert on islands out in the middle of Peach and Sound? It's there. Okay. Uh, put this back on so you can see my ugly. Here. Wow, all right. So that, that's, that's how you measure it. You actually you make a waveform, and, it, and this machine allows me to, once I capture the waveform, I push another button and I'll look at the harmonics. Those are the multiples of 60 cycle. And they're very important because, like in cows, certain harmonics, uh, the, the, those that are uh, three times 60, multiples of three times 60 are the ones that bother the cows and stop from milking. Even ones cancel out, the odd ones don't. So uh, that's that's how I how I do it. And I, I actually I measure the current in the ground, the voltage in the ground. Okay, well, let me just ask you in the most basic layman what the most basic way you could explain what dirty electricity it's is. It's not a simple explanation. Well, it's called electrical pollution. The industry knows that it, it causes uh, sound distortion. If you're into audio or, or, or video. You have to have clean electricity or else you get, you get static. The other tool I use uh, when I'm hunting for dirty electricity is uh, AM radio. I, I keep one in my duty bag. It's a, it's a Radio Shack. Uh, it's a Radio Shack portable. What I do is I put it on. Turn it off station at AM. Uh, 
you hear something that's dirty, it gives you static. Something that's got dirty electricity. And if I put a compact flush of light here, here, it'd be howling. But it's, it's not that bad. But anyway, that's another great tool. And wireless routers, your microwave oven, compact flush of lights, and any device that's putting a lot of dirty electricity out, you can pick it up with a $50 AM radio. So you can do some troubleshooting in your own house. And what's disturbing now is that when I go out and I measure power lines, it shouldn't have anything on them except 60 cycles. You can pick up all this high frequency stuff that's on the wires. And uh, unfortunately, the, the weak link in solar is the inverters. It's the solar, photovoltaic solar. That's to take light and they. If sunlight hits a thing, it makes direct current. You, you can't use direct current. Everything runs on alternating. Well, everything runs on DC, but you can buy. You can't buy to the DC from the utility. So the, the, the thing that changes the DC to AC is called an inverter, a great inner tight inverter. So if you have solar in your, on your house roof cells, and you want to talk to the utility, and you're tied to them, you have to have an inverter. And the big ones, about that measure the 23 megawatt solar farm it's got it's got 46 inverters each inverter size of a school bus it's, just, it's got all sorts of junk in it that changes the dc to ac then you send it all to a switch bureau and from there it goes to a substation it goes up to the wires and they ship it to timbuktu but i've measured each step stage of that game it's dirty very dirty and uh, it's disappointingly dirty because i was hoping that this would be a great way uh, to get away from fossil fuels. It's even worse. The wind turbines are horrible. I've measured a couple of reservations that have uh, wind turbines right next to them. And, uh, the people are sick. The air is dirty. It has dirty electricity. The ground. The wires. And it's all coming from those the inverters and the turbines. Because they have the same problem. They have to make grid 60 cycle electricity. And the devices that do it make a mess of it. All right, I have two questions for you. The first one is, yes, but it's Christmas time while we're doing this, and there's people with Christmas lights all around them. Is that an unfair statement to say that Christmas lights are giving people cancer? Well, you know, probably, you know, I wouldn't concentrate on that. But I mean, is it an unfair statement to just say in general... If I, if I tell somebody all the lights in your house are giving you cancer. Well, it's not, not the lights per se, but the energy they draw. Now, the, to make a point, it, I just published a paper. It's kind of obscure. But people have noticed that, uh, well, actually, for 60 years, the economists have noticed any time there's a recession, okay, everybody gets healthier. What happens in a recession? <laughs> you know, people are out of work. They're sad. They haven't got money. Yet the, the death rate goes down and life expectancy goes up. Well, it all has to do with the, uh, industrial electric generation and use. What happens is when you get a recession, the motors shut off. People are out of work. And so there's a lot less electricity flowing down the grid during, during recessions. And, uh, and you get just the opposite when you get a boom. The death rates go up. The life expectancy shortens. Go ahead. What about where the Amish live now? Do they live 20 years longer now because they still don't use electricity? Well, no, the, 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 what's interesting about them is their life expectancy for men and women is the same, and it's been over 70 since 1700. So they're right about, you know, we're, we're living about the same. Maybe they live a little bit longer. But uh, I'll tell you something else about them. Their cancer rates are half what we have. Their diabetes rates are way less than half what we have. They don't commit suicide. There's no fat Amish kids. There's no child to <laughs> Zero. Not a good apple. It's such a good apple. A, hey, I know. I was going to make apple pie, but I didn't. But anyway. <laughs> My question for you is this. Who disagrees with you now? Like, who's like the main person that would say that this information isn't true? Because depending on who it is, perhaps I could get them on like a three-way next time. Well, uh, the, 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 well, you know, I, I do, do some medical legal work. I testify in court. So you get these industry whores who they'll, they'll, they'll say the sky is blue when it's black. I mean, 
Oh. So, so you get these, these hard guns. I don't know of anybody who's reputable who doesn't work or take money from the cell phone industries who shoots the stuff down. I mean, there's, there's been like a, about, about 80 reviews of my book on Amazon, and there's one negative one. You can tell he's, and he didn't read the book because you can tell he talks about no animal studies. Well, hell, I talk about animal studies. What about like colored light bulbs, like fun light bulbs? Not not just the Christmas blinking ones, but like if you, I have like a, a green light bulb that I plugged in. Well, yeah, the, the, the color doesn't make a bit of difference. The color is just a function of the, the light frequencies. You know, red, orange, green. You know, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. At one end, the wavelengths are long. At the other end, the, the frequency of the it determines the color. Uh, it doesn't affect the electrical properties of what's coming out, no. Okay. Okay. Here's, uh, Here's another question. question. When I try and when bring I, awareness to, the, to, to people, people about this kind of stuff, stuff, I find I a lot of times they, they just say, say, oh, everything's oh, bad for bad. you. Like, that, that's like the that's new thing to say. Everybody, everybody just says, oh, that everything's bad, bad for you. Yeah, well, you know, I, you know hey, look, I, I face this all the time. I've a lot of people say, oh, oh, they're addicted to their cell phones and to the electrical toys. They don't want to give them up. I mean, I've got a cell phone. It's never been on in my body, ever. I take it hiking in case I fall down. I have to make an emergency call. And it's never been against my head. It's all a speakerphone. So you can use it, use it in those, you know, those circumstances. But most of the kids, the phone's on in a pocket in their body. Yes, that's what I do. I, and the guy said uh, there's, there's sperm. Cats are going south, and uh, well, anyway, the kids don't want to give up their toys. Wait, wait. Okay, no. Okay. I do the I same to, thing, and everyone I know does the same thing. So how? What am I supposed to do? Like, if I want to carry a cell phone on me? What are you supposed to do with your cell phone? I mean, I know. I I, I tell people that if they keep the phone. Two or three inches away from their head, it, it, it's not going to hurt them anywhere near if they put it up against their head. I tell them, would you stick your head in the microwave oven? They say, oh, no. I say, well, that's what you do when you stick a cell phone up against your ear. That's why they get cancer or acoustic neuromas. That's why they get brain cancers on the same side of the head. The other thing I tell them is don't put it against your body when it's on because it's ready 24-7 you know, while it's on. Don't sleep with it under your pillow. If you keep it away from your body and uh, on a speakerphone, and it's not on when it's on your body. Uh, it's, it's not nearly as dangerous as, uh, as if, if you get it right up against your head and you keep it in your pocket on all the time. That's what I tell the kids. I go to sleep go to with one in my mouth. Way. No, I'm just so, kidding. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> no way. No, no that way. would kill me. Of course not. All right, let me get to one of my questions. All right, um, the thing I like about you, by the way, is you have no pretense. I'm too old to have pretense. Okay, I want to... Okay, here's okay. something I want to ask you. I think part of the problem with EMF. And getting the word out there is that EMF itself is not a part of our vocabulary. People don't talk about it every day. And personally, I think it's interesting. And one of the reasons I want to do this interview is because to me, there's three or four common things that are affecting everybody all the time. And they're not in our vocabulary. And that's BPA. Refined sugar, which is in our vocabulary, but I'll get to that. And EMF, and something else that I can't even think of right now. But hey, look, EMF blows everything else away. I mean, I, I, I'm addicted to ice cream. I've been eating it for 80 years. Refined sugar I love. The Amish eat all sorts of greasy, sweet stuff. They make great pastries. The critical thing is, if you don't have the EMF exposure, everything else is, is, is rosy. Why do you think you have fertility clinics in every corner in this country? Because women can't get pregnant. 
I don't want to call this crap anymore. I read about that in my book. Stetcher cleaned up a bank and all the women got pregnant who couldn't get pregnant. They clean up a school and dramatic things happen, but the kids don't get asthma. Go ahead. So how so long does a guy have to have a cell phone in his pocket until he can't have babies? I don't know, but the sperm counts have gone down dramatically in the last 15, 20 years, and they're still going south. This is part of population basis. It's a little good thing you make millions of sperm, but uh, because, you know, as you go from 10 million to 5 million, you still can get somebody pregnant. But if people who marginal sperm counts, uh, I think a cell phone could tip them over so they, they'd be infertile. Subfertile. Do you think it's you unprofessional, think it's unprofessional that, I eat, that, that I'm eat eating an apple eat, while I do the interview? No, if you want to eat an apple, eat it. It's your business. All right, cool. All right. LEDs, there's some LED technologies coming out that are pretty clean. So there's always light in the house. The old incandescent bulb is great. They last, they last longer. The compact fluorescents don't last. And they're, they're full of mercury. If they break, got a toxic hazard on your hands. So, okay, the, okay. whoever what? owns these giant lighting companies, do you think they know about this stuff and, and make their house somehow safer for e, from EMFs for their own family than they do for their consumers? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think most of them care. So the people who have to pay attention to it are people who have to make precision pumps and who who work in, with precision electronic motors, they can't, their electricity screws them up. And people who work in the audio, uh, audio files, uh, recording studios and stuff, they can't use the dirty electricity. So they know about it. And, uh, you know, the elect, there's a big think tank called the Electric Power Research Institute that is so subsidized by the utilities. So for 30 years they've been telling them that they should increase the carrying capacity of the neutrals, put more wires on the poles to get rid of the, the, the ground current problem. See, this has been, it's been killing cows for 30 years. Farmers have been suing like mad. Very few of them succeed because of all the crap in the ground. And now that we've got a good study out there, it's going to get published soon, showing that 10 millivolts make a cow sick of milk. And uh, so what a, the utilities are going to have to change uh, at least in rural areas, or else they get their butts in. Because now the farmers are going to win, because we got proof. Well, nobody's going to pay attention until until they drop, or they get sick, or their kids get sick. When I first heard about solar and wind, I said, oh, this is wonderful. Now, there is one kind of solar that's good. The kind where the mirrors concentrate the sun's heat on a tower and boil water or heat oil and make steam to run a turbine. That's But the solar I'm talking about is photovoltaic solar. Now, it's okay if you use the cells to make DC and you charge batteries. That's great. As long as you don't make AC from the, from the cells. Because when you do that, you have to have an inverter. And I can send to an inverter website that says all inverters cause AM and AM interference, which means they all make dirty electricity. So smoke that one. So they know what's dirty and what's clean. If the people that make them and sell them say that they all cause AM radio interference, what's it tell you? And, and with wind, it's even worse. Because they make sound. The, the fan blades going, the, the windmill blades going around make a low frequency sound that makes people sick up to three quarters of a mile from the wind turbines. And I've talked to a lot of those people. So it's got the sound problem and it's got the dirty electricity problem. I think. I think the technologies are great. They're here to stay. They just got to be cleaned up. Hey, look, at, hey, I, I keep sending books to celebrities. I'm just trying to get some angel out there who's, who's media savvy. I try to get on Dr. Oz. I try to get on these, these, these radio shows, talk shows. You know, get on Ellen, the generous show. I mean, I, I wrote Oprah four or five times. I wrote 60 Minutes. And all of the big sh people watch movies and they watch TV. They don't read. If I could get on one of them for a little while, we could make people start lighting people up on this. They don't know what's happening. You don't see it. You don't feel it. You don't taste it. Some people are starting to. The electrohypersensitives. 
they start to put Wi-Fi on airplanes. A lot of people get sick on planes, and, and uh, they won't fly anymore, so it's going to cut the, into the airline's uh, profits. Well, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview is because I feel... I get like a headache every time I'm in a room with a fluorescent bulb. You know, you're electrosensitive. So what is... A lot of people are. Ah, man. So what am I supposed to do? What's an electrosensitive person supposed to do? Well, I know people live in their cars. I know people that have moved their houses four or five times. I know people who, who, uh, they go to Green Bank, West Virginia, where by the law you can't have any a radio frequency transmission because they got a radio telescope there. And I know some people live out in the Arizona desert, a place called Snowflake. They're, they're, they're going to have to move too because they put cell towers up near there. But it's, it's a hell of a problem. In Europe, they built refuges for these people. And, uh, Did you ever see the movie Powder? No. Oh, you would love this. It's like this guy, one of the things he could do is he could touch things and, like, turn on light bulbs and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I do the same. I just throw a switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm actually kind of done with my questions, but, I mean, if I could... Okay, I know what you're saying. You, you're looking for somebody media savvy, but I'll tell you this. I mean, this doesn't really help you, but I feel like someone like Ellen, for example would love this information. I, have, but, I've, I go to their websites and I, I give them a, they say, contact with a show idea. And I, I give them a show idea. I say, hey, look, at, we could talk. In this book, I, I show that women are real sensitive about their weight. There's an epidemic of obesity in this country. There's an epidemic of asthma, especially in kids. It's all due to EMF, all of it. It's not due to white sugar. I, I, there's a, let me just finish with this. I'm getting tired. There's a study a couple of years, years ago done by Harvard. They gathered all the data on obesity around the world, and blood sugar, and cholesterol, and they just ranked places. And they published this stuff. And I looked at the diabetes and the, the body mass index and obesity stuff. I almost fell off my chair. The top places in the world were all little bitty islands out in the Pacific, with one exception, or there are places off Britain. Why that is, because the little islands... They don't generate their own electricity. They generate their electricity from brushed generators, like Edison's. They truck in fuel oil on barges. They fire up these Cummins diesels, and they're all dirty. I'm so open. So those people in those other islands who have this kind of electricity get fat. The, the top ten islands, are half of them are Micronesia. Nauru, Cook Islands, uh, Tonga, and uh, there's a couple in the, north, in the Atlantic. And the places like the Saudi Arabia off the grid, See, oh, the stuff is uh, it's affecting every phase of our life. It's uh, shortening our lives. It's, I think Alzheimer's epidemic is due to it too. And, uh, you know, what are you going to? What, what can I say? I'm just, I finally wrote the book because I got frustrated with not having any, any response to this. Uh, in fact, I got so I can't get papers published here in this country, <laughs> which is weird. Okay, well, uh, you call me again any time. We can pick this up uh, unless you have something else you want to ask. There's nothing Is right it? now. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, enjoy. All right, thank you. Okay, well, have, have a good one. All right, you too. Adios. All right.